Sacred Cup. It's too late to be in the dark harbor, sailing paper boats. Too late for your necromancing. There you go. Oh shit, that's some heavy stuff. Am I driving okay? I do the thing with Katie, Katharina, the wheel. Tabard Stark, Cheech and Chong. Suited up, Hugo Bossolino. Want a lot of mushrooms and black cherry jello. Laugh some more. Welcome back to Lady Babylon. It's nice to have you with us tonight here at Initiating Apocalypse. I'm going to bring you something tonight, but I want to just give you a warning. There is no satire in what I am about to show you. I appreciate your coming tonight, and I appreciate your time, and I have some of the finest, some of the finest wares tonight. Now, you don't have to buy them. I'm giving them to you. It's lovely. It's lovely. Tonight, we're going to resurrect a Roman. A Roman. So get your stuff together. This is serious, people. This, this person died defending his own people against a volcano. All right. This is a guy who had somebody follow him around and read to him 24 7. <sighs> Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't you like to have that? Wouldn't you like to have that? Mm. Well, he's going to be the portal tonight through which you and I, I'm so happy, Satanic Congregation, I'm so happy because he's going to be the portal through whom you and I hit those rock bottom vampires. Oh, if you have come tonight to see the origin, you will find it tonight on Lady Babylon. We're just going to bring up Latin sources. I know it's a bit of a change. It's a bit of a change, but that's what we're going to do. And now I must apply the warning, right? We're still on ship still, right? Everything's going. Times, whew. we're going back. First century, we're going back to the first century. Oh, God, you're going to love it. We're not going to look at anything you've ever seen before. We're not going to look at anything you've ever seen before. Yes. Oh, we're going to get down. We're going to get down to the fluids tonight. We're going to find out what it is that makes us rock. All right. All right. This is Rome, baby. This is Rome. Did you get the sacred name? Yes, here we go. Here we go. Bring it up, Chewy. Give it to me. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Pliny. And what is Pliny talking about? He's writing this incredibly long natural history. Incredibly long natural history. This thing's ridiculous. This is from book 28. This is from book 28. And what is Pliny telling? He says, look, we've talked about all, all the medicines that are derived from nature, right? And interestingly enough, from that space, which is between Uranus and Gaia, Uranus and Gaia. <sighs> God, can you, can you taste that authenticity? This guy is educated, you know what I mean? This, this, this Roman is true Roman. Do you think you're Roman out there? This is real Roman, you know what I mean? He's the one. Look, we can look at all the herbs, right, and all those remedies, right? <sighs> also ones from the animals, right? These things are things that bring health. Oh, God. Yeah, what can we say then beyond this? We can talk about the ones that come from people. Wait a minute, what? 
What? Right? You're here, surprised. Take it down. You're here, surprised. Right? Here we are at the party. Everybody out. Everybody out of the ship, right? Go, go, go. Okay, what's on the menu for tonight? We're going to get to the baby blood eventually. We're going to... Oh, we're going to get there, but just wait, just wait. First, Plenty's got to set us up. Look, what are we talking about tonight? We're talking about those fluids and substances that come from us that are healing. Oh, let's take a look at it. Give us, give us the next source, Chewy. Look, oh, God, let's start. Let's start. Yes. Oh, here. I'm going to put my glasses on people. Look at this. Um, let's start out, right, from those things which come about from people, you know. This subject's not easy, people. It's not easy. Um, okay, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? <clears throat> they drink the blood of gladiators. Wait, who, what? Um, they drink the blood of gladiators, those who are the comitales, right, those who have that illness, they drink the blood of gladiators. And what do they do? They do it like it's a living cup. A living cup of communion. This is the chalice. Did you want to know what the chalice is? Did you want to know what the chalice is? I'm bringing you. I'm bringing you the chalice tonight. Are you ready? Oh, you know, here's, the, here's their equivalent of, oh, Jesus, right? Oh, oh Hercules. Right, <laughs> he was a soter too, you know. Um, about a thousand years before um, Jesus ever caught up to the scene, right? They're doing the same traditions. You didn't know those were the same. Why do you think Hylas? Hylas is there, yeah. Okay, all right, all right. He's a boy for those of you who are in the audience. And by the way, the warning tonight is off the charts. It uh, this is gonna get graphic in a historical kind of way. And you may not have the stomach for it. Ladies of, uh, of deprecation, right? Close your eyes. Close your eyes, sisters. Here we go. Are you ready? By Hercules, we're ready. You know what I mean? Well, what are you going to do? You're going to drink this stuff. You're going to drink this stuff right out of the living. Wait, what? Yes. We're going to drink it right out of the living and as we apply our lips to that wound we remove the vital spirit ah oh, wait a minute wait a minute it's not done it's not done what else do we do here tonight people what else do we do we suck the marrow and the brains of infants. Oh, Chewy, get us that imagery going. Get us that imagery going, whatever. What did you just tell us, Plenty? Now, for everybody here who's here for educational purposes, who are getting your degree in Satanology, um, what's going on? What's going on? It's okay. Settle down settle down we're talking about using the body as a pharmaceutical tool using the body as a pharmaceutical tool yeah wow let's tune it up and see one of those things that they're doing is drinking of the blood and if you have epilepsy the best thing you can do is go down to the arena Wait on the sands. They will bring the fresh kills out. You and me and the witches will take the medicines that are there from the dead. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Oh, we've come among cultured people. You say, these are Romans. Amen. I thought these were Romans. Yes. Yeah, watch. It's going to get better. Just wait. Give me the next one. This is, these people better have a strong stomach tonight. Satanic congregation, hold on. Hold on. And look, people, we got nothing. We got no interest in conspiracy or agenda. We got none. 
That's why we got no satire tonight. It's just all literal. Oh, God. Relish these texts, baby. Relish these texts. So, yeah, 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 yeah. This stuff it shouldn't be. We shouldn't be talking about it. Right? We're talking about Piacula. We're talking about the chalice. Yeah. And um, you can use the milk from that nursing woman. You can use it to make medicine. Medieri. You hear the root of the name Medea? Yes. Oh, my God. You can use that milk? Yes. Yeah. It's especially good when they're just around the time of having given birth. Isn't that nice? It's got all the right components to be a good, strong drug. Haven't you ever wanted? Haven't you ever wanted to partake of that medicine? You did once. You were tiny, and you did. Oh God, love it. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. Boom. Yeah. Okay. This one, I just look. This translator happened to say this so well that I just wanted to share it. You know, usually I assume control the text. Um, because well, quite frankly, there are a couple of places in here that he got it totally wrong. And he did because he didn't do the medical side. Um, okay, right? Preferably, that's you got to see it firsthand. You got to be in there tasting that text, right? Even if it's Latin. And come on, they're hot dwellers, right? But the Romans, the Romans, you know, <sighs> um, what's funny is half of the words that I'm going to show you tonight are all um, derived from the Greek, right? Love it. Where's Marcus Aurelius writing a Greek? Fantastic. Um, look at this. We do not look upon life as so essentially desirable that it must be prolonged at any cost. Be it what it be what it may, and you who are of the opinion, be assured, whoever you may be, that you will die nonetheless. What's the nonetheless for? Because the people who are drinking the blood and eating the flesh, they are living longer. And you and I have seen Marcus Aurelius, Galen says, and you can tell he's on it. You can tell he's on it. Oh, oh, what are they? <sighs> Even though you shall have lived in the midst of obscenities and abominations. Obscenities and abominations. Wow. Is that what they're going to call it? Is that what they're going to call it? Look, people, let's get this straight. When you step off that time machine into the middle of a cult of flesh-eating vampires who want baby brains, baby brains, brains. <sighs> you could use the woman who just produced as well as her fetus. You could. You could. There's no satire. I am not kidding you. I am not giving you an argument. I do not. Look, here are both my hands. Right? There's nowhere on the dolly. There's nowhere on the dolly that I am touching tonight. That's it. I'm giving you the sources for my fans who say, that man is crazy. I give you one response. Um, if she's not tired out, you didn't do your job, dummy. Wow. It's people. I don't get it. Let's hit the next one. Go to the next source. We need more of these vampires. These are luscious. I love these. Okay, people, don't get ready to shock yourself, right? 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 Here, blow that up. Blow that up. Um, look at the bottom line. Incantamenta. Carminum. Incantamenta. Incantamenta. Pliny says, then there's the whole matter with these people of the enchanting evocations of the powers that come through those portals, the daimones, right? What are we doing when we incant? We are using um, poetry. We're using song to bring to ourself a force, right? To draw down those stars, right? 
beautiful let's go to the next one and plenty says look this is this is all those magi those drug using magi right that's what they they're the ones doing this kind of stuff they're going around picking out people you do this when this is going to happen to you what oh, this is lovely you didn't know jesus was a vampire that's what's funny you didn't know jesus christ from mark 14 51 52 the dude who was arrested in a public park with a naked boy yelling, I'm not a child trafficker. You didn't know he was in a vampire cult? <sighs> yeah. Didn't you see him resurrected? Yeah. You ever seen him? I dare you to do that. I dare you to do that. Shows up on the shore and his boat full of naked children is there. If you don't believe me, go read the Bible. Yes, my goodness. This is a great era. It's the opening of the scriptures. I love it. Let's go to the next source. Okay, wait. We're going back to plenty. Oh, are we already there? Are we already there? Hey, look at this. 226 observations on remedies derived from the flesh. Eight remedies derived from kitties. <laughs> People, look at what you're looking at. Remedies derived from children wow do you know why because sometimes the blood has different constituents in it and you don't want post-pubertal blood if you are trying to treat disease oh <gasps> that's why that stuff that's fresh that comes out of the uterus boom that stuff is the best that's the highest quality yeah now if you and I, as Romans, can penetrate to those ventricles, oh, oh, you know what's there. You know what's there. Woo! Okay, let's go. This is, this is fantastic history, people. Do you see what the Romans are doing? Do you love this? Oh, God. 226 observations on remedies. That's just derived from us. How many ways do I have of producing your remedies? Oh, I love that. Next, next. Okay, look, people, this is a long, this is a long passage. And I just want to, I'm going to read it real quick to you. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Okay, I'm putting my glasses on. I'm sorry. Here we go. Yeah, you know, um, we know that there are these people, you know, who have these terrible, monstrous natures. And um, they produce poison just from their mere aspect. Whoo! Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. Right. Um, jump down to line three. Oh God! You know what you can use? You can use the entire body of these people. You know, uh, uh, you know. Um, it's from a family, right? It's the people who have that command with the serpents yeah and oh what do they do what do they do mm, 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 mm. they uh they have command over that power they're called the silly and the marcy and those who live in this you know on the island of cyprus they call them fiokienes right fiokienes do you know where that comes from that's greek people that's great, people. Love it, right? Ex qua familia legatus, Ewagon. Ewagon, another Greek name. Another Greek name. What are these Greeks doing? Oh, my God. Um, look, one of them came. His name was Ewagon from this family that works with the snakes and or this tribe. And what happened to him? Well, you know, uh, under Roman command to perform an experiment, they threw him into a container full of poisonous vipers. And what happens? You know, it was a friggin' miracle. It was a friggin' miracle. Um, they showed up just as uh, they, they, they licked him. That's it. They just licked him. You know? Wow. 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 This is a, this is a, look, this group. This family, they have a certain thing that they do. You know what it is? They have this virus, very last, very, very bottom line, left, first word, left-hand side, virus, 
You know what that means? That means poison or toxin. They have a toxin of odor. And this is terribly translated, right? Um, in the springtime, wernis temporibus, they have this strong odor. They have this poisonous toxin. It stinks. And their sweat is a, me is a medicine. Look at that word, medebatur. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? Not, not just their sweat, but their saliva. Their, their spit, baby. Their spit. Do you remember Jesus? Do you remember Jesus and his spitting? Spit, spit in people's mouths. Getting a loogie and spit. Oh, you know a loogie can heal? Did you know a loogie could heal? This is the Jesus who was arrested with the naked boy at 4 a.m. Yeah, screaming, I'm not a, I'm not a child trafficker. Leave me alone, SWAT team. <laughs> he is there in this place. Now, what about source-wise? Look, plenty is first century, so uh, I'm sorry, but this is exactly contemporary. Just a couple of years after. Yeah, a couple of years after. Um, that's all. That's as close as you can get because Pliny is absorbing everything that was in the environment and culture that Jesus and his boys would have interacted with. So thank you, Pliny. Thank you. What else can Pliny give us here? Give us a little bit more, Pliny. There's a little, couple more details I want him to give us. Are you ready for this? Go ahead. I think it was there. Does that work? Go. Yeah. Okay. Um, properties of human spittle. If you're interested in such a thing, there it is. Give me the next one. What else? Remedies derived from the wax in the human ear. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's wait on that one. Let's wait until we're a little more familiar with each other. Let's wait. Here's the next one. Yeah. Oh, from hair and teeth. You know, man. You know that that hair can be smoked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've seen him grind up teeth, bro. I've seen him grind up teeth and use them in things. Wow, these people, fantastic. Um, pharmacopoeia here is off the charts. Give me the next one. Remedies derived from the human blood. Ooh, and what? Sexual Congress. Say, I didn't know Congress was sexual at all. Um, certainly the Senate isn't. Um, no, seriously, in all seriousness. In all seriosity, um, look at what they're deriving their drugs from. Did you know that your blood could be a drug? Your blood could be a drug. Not only could it be a drug, it could be a sex drug. Can you believe this? You can get a satiric charge out of your blood. <sighs> you know what's coming. You know what's coming. Oh, it's not going to be pretty, but it's coming. All right, so um, let's get back to it. What else, Plenty? Give me a couple more, Plenty. Yeah, I think there's a couple more. Oh, here, here he's going to say in the end, look, 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 Orpheus. I just want you to see second line. Who's interested in the sanguine? Who's interested in that blood? Orpheus is interested in that blood. Orpheus is interested in that blood. <sighs> okay. Okay, cool. Everybody here, cool. They're yelling Orpheus. Got no problem. Okay, next one. Boom. Oh, yep. Not, and then we're going to shift gears. Look, 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 look. Okay, are you ready? Let's go. This is a side field trip for the satanic congregation. Are you ready? This says the, um, the gems of the Greeks, they use um, the sordes. The sordes. What is sordes? Um, those it, you, we get our word sorted from it. Those are the you know the icky things that you produce from your bod. The the Greeks used those in their gymnasia as remedies, right? Right. Remember when you're in the gymnasium, what do you do, man? You're a pedagogue and you're with your ten year old. Student, and you've taken him to the gymnasium, you gotta scrape him down, bro. They oil him up before, right? First, you strip his clothes off, then you oil them all down, and then you let him wrestle. 
And when he's done wrestling, you scrape off, scrape it off, baby, scrape it off and save it. Cause that boy sweat, it works. Yeah. You know, you got to combine it with other stuff. You can't just be going around licking boy sweat, right? You got to combine it with something. Yeah. Right. It's, I don't know. It's pH. I don't know. Tell Hamilton, figure it out. Hamilton. Let's go to the next one. Boom. Oh, oh no, no, no. Back to that. Back to the uh, previous. There we go. Um, Cause we want to finish this. And he says, what happens? So, you know, they scrape it off, but what does it do? It's a heating thing that breaks up clots. Yeah. And um, great. Well, that's what we use it for. It's, it's, it's a sort of medicinum. Very good. Very good. And you know what else we use it for? Oh God, you're going to love this. We use it to soften the vulva. We use it to facilitate the uterus and uterine health. Uterine health. Wait, you use the boy sweat for the, you take that boy sweat and you apply it. Wow, that's fantastic. What? Wait, we're not done. And what does it do? It helps with inflammation. Helps with inflammation. And you know what? You can turn it into um, a means of expelling your menses. Wait, what? Remember I told you guys that they were into programmed menstruation? Yeah, believe it or not, women, when they get a chance, will program their own menstruation. Makes sense. I would. Yeah, doesn't it? Smart. It's thinking. It's Bronze Age smart woman thinking. Yeah. And wh what are they going to do? You can draw it down with a key and you can draw it down. Right? What else can you do? You can burn your butt warts off. <sighs> Seriously, seriously, isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Because, you know, they got condylomata in antiquity. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that describes several different growths. But one of them is, a, is an anal wart. Don't you want to treat your anal warts? Yeah, sounds good to me. It's good medicine. Um, what's the next one? Oh, and for those, it, it, it honestly, for those of you who have neurology, who has this this pain due to a nerve. You know what we do in that? You doing that? This stuff deadens that. Oh, okay. So we're going to start, you know. Yeah. And joints, joints, right? Has some action on the joints, right? I never knew boy sweat had such goodness in it. Yeah, but apparently it does. Are you ready to heart? Let's go harvest some more. Let's go find these different things, blood, we got blood there, right? Jesus, you're still with Jesus. We got the blood and the flesh, Jesus, right? We got the naked boy that's with you, right? You know, there was sweat on that naked kid. You know, there was, if you can collect it um, with a scraper or a strigil, that's what they called it, um, with a strigil, if you can collect that, um, you could also get it off a living subject, couldn't you? Yeah, it would stand to reason. Yeah, fantastic. Maybe that's, you know, one of the reasons. That, that kid was slippery, by the way. Um, but notice that it's combined with oil. So who knows what that's doing, you know, chemically. What does boy sweat and oil do when you put them together? You want to find out? Go to a catechesis in antiquity. <laughs> Did you know they stripped those boys naked for those things? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you thought Mother Church was so innocent. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Why? What do you tell them, by the way? What is, what, what, what's the excuse that you give the kid after you traumatize him? Um, he tells us in, what's his name? Wrote catechesis. Mr. Gog at catechesis. That guy? Yeah, you know, I don't want to bring him up. I don't, I just, the door's closed at the end of the world. Who cares? Um, yeah, and he's offensive. Anyway, what is it that you do um, when the kid who has been through this horrific sexual abuse, what do you tell him, right? Well, when he starts going through it, the first thing you tell him is, look, Jesus hung on the cross naked. That's why you got to get naked. Isn't that clever? Isn't our, isn't Holy Father Church? Isn't that the isn't that the cleverness? 
that's the priestly cleverness of Christianity. That's that's clever. You know, it, you, you got to give the Romans for arresting them, right? Uh, for doing this kind of stuff, you got to give it. You got to give it to the Romans. But you know, hey, they got they tried to get by with it. Yeah, love it. Let's go to the next source now. Before we do, um, bring up some pictures and cause people's minds to do things. Please, Chewy. Um, look, I'm gonna give you something now, and this source is one that um, I don't believe you'll have access to. I, it'll come soon, you know, if it if it hasn't already. But last time I looked, no access. This is an insertion that was made into a text from the 12th century. Yeah, a Latin text. And by the way, 12th century Latin is like licking the backside of a milking cow after, um, after a visit from the vet. Uh, yeah, no, it, it's unpleasant, right? No, you know. You know, cows aside, gets my goat a little bit. Did we, Penelope, did Penelope come tonight? Speaking of, speaking of friends, hello, Penelope. That's gratuitous, isn't it? It's just gratuitous. But look, licking that won't get you any. It doesn't matter if it's cross or a goat, right? Licking anything like that is not going to get you where you're supposed to be. You got to be smart about your licking. Okay, let's go to. The source here. Where's the source from, people? This is right out of that book. It's an insert into it. It doesn't take it down again. I'm sorry. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, it has nothing to do with the text around it, and it's um, reads um, as an insert would read. But licking that Latin from the 12th century. Oh God, it tastes like somebody didn't wash their pants. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, maybe they have a hemorrhoid or something and, you know, they need better hygiene. That's what 12th century Latin tastes like, right? If you don't believe me, right? And all the medieval historians out there who just got rankled, um, I don't care because, you know, it's true. The Renaissance was the product of people trying to clean up the Latin. Let me say that again. The Renaissance happened because people tried to clean the Latin. You mean your language isn't constantly going uphill? No, no, it's not. Sometimes it comes down into a ditch. And in the Middle Ages, due to the lack of education, people didn't have a access to these sources, to these wondrous works of art that were made by civilization a civilization that produced democracy. And these works, these literary works were ignored. So the, la the language itself went right into the toilet. And the Renaissance was the reemergence of that classical Latin. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, my God. Oh, do you see the potential? And that's why this library in Herculaneum is so important. What we're going to find there will produce renaissance love it love it okay let's go to this text i just have a couple of slides here a couple of couple of a couple of you know translations and i'm i'm uh we're gonna fly through it look he says look these things are made in very diverse ways you know he's talking about what is that fire of medea and you're about to find out the fire of medea isn't just a napalm-like petroleum product that was used by the Greek Navy. That is its adaptation. Its original form is a mystery formula. It's a drug. Guess what? A drug from a body fluid. Isn't that nice? Oh, my God. It's my blood and flesh. I'm the Sotera. It's my blood and flesh. Do you see? Let's go to it. Let's go to it. I love this. I love this. Mm. Here we go. Look, people can make, people can produce this stuff, but it's quite, a, it's quite an art to get to be able to do this. And there are those who do it, right, who have that expertise. 
Mm -hmm. And what do they do? They build, look, they take this pot, it's made of copper, right? And they go up and they hunt these rubitas, these toads, um, shrub, bramble toads. <laughs> bramble toads. God, let's go find some toads. Did you ever hear of lick, licking these toads? They're about to do it. Are you ready? But this is way more sophisticated. If you've been exposed to the toads um, in in the literature, or in the you know journalism, you know you see one of these people out there and they're talking about the toads. Um, look, this is part of their part of their craft. The toads are part. Blow it up, please. Yep. Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, God, what happens? They take this thing and they hunt these toads and they put it in there and they feed these toads on pigeon flesh and honey. Pigeon flesh and honey. Wait, what? Yeah. How long do they do this? They do it for three months, bro. And when this time is complete, when this phase is over, you know, for two or three days, they what? They what? Oh my God, they take that stuff that's remained over and they apply it to the breasts of some um, beast, some animal, right? Along with the milk, lacte, prole, fete, and with some fetal. Wait, some fetal? Yeah, yeah, there's the whole fetal thing going on, right? You have to remember, this is biochemical polypharmacy. Yeah. We're dealing with organisms producing drugs. So we got to make sure that we're all at the right time. So if you take that 81-year-old man's blood, that stuff is valueless, right? That's why we're having to give all those people transfusions. They're giving transfusions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they live longer, bro. Didn't you see it? Oh, my God. Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius is not a cartoon character. He was a Roman emperor. Yeah. Fantastic. Don't blow it up, sure. I got to see it again. So what happens when space of time is complete? They're putting the stuff on the nipples, and then they're feeding, breastfeeding. And the one who's breastfeeding, you know, for a long time, they're going to sit there and suck. But when they get sustained, when they get full, they're going to fall off. They're going to fall off. Yeah. Yeah. Next one. Next one, let me just say for a minute. You can do some pictures. Um, let me just say for a minute, what kind of world have we come to? We've come to a world that has created democracy and science, scientific method. We've come to a world where we have generations and generations and generations of an applied scientific pharmacology. We have refined the art to such a degree that we are now using body fluids. We're using body fluids, whether they're of toads or of people is irrelevant, right? <sighs> Isn't that nice? How many of those substances are still out there? Let's keep with, let's stay with ours, the ones that we got. Okay, we go to the next one. Look at this. Look at this. Um, what happens under the influence of this special milk? What happens to these people that are, you know, taking that stuff? What are these little dudes, toady toads? They grow up. They grow up. They get big. They swell. They swell with that poison carrying juice. <laughs> Love it. Did you know breast milk could carry poison? That's a good way to go. It's a good way to go. What are you going to do after? You're going to put it right into the vessels. You're going to take that stuff and you're going to shove it right in. You're going to want? Oh, my God. Haven't you ever seen them? Right. You know they can remove blood, too. They don't have to. Oh, I got to show them that one, right? But, but look, on the next line here, I just want you to see uh, we got the snakes involved. Calendri serpentes. Wait, wait, What? Yeah, and we've got some aquatic snakes. And what are these people doing? What are these people doing? They're combining the snakes with the toads now. They're combining it? Yeah. And what do they feed them? What do they feed them? Remember Galen was feeding the roosters the theriax to see if the different snakes would be able to kill them, right? What are they feeding these things? Human 
flesh. Cadaver, baby. Look at that word cadaver there. Last line, cadaver. Right? Oh, my God. Serious? Look, this kind of stuff. Give me the next one. This kind of stuff. Um, we don't have the science for this. We don't. We don't. It's going to take, according to Hamilton, it's going to take another 10 friggin' years to develop the AI that can tell us what's going on with the chemistry. Go. Bring it, break it down. You know, there's an asp. There's a poison-producing asp, he says, and it's a death bringer in three kind of ways. Right? It's got that three-headed death. And what does it do? He says, well, its name escaped my mind. I love that when I read this. I'm like, you know, first of all, we don't know who this is. Probably Mapes just added it to the text. Um, yeah, yeah. So here, you know, um, he's getting it from some kind of source. Um, and that's what a good classicist should work to do. Track down now. What is the source? What's the vocab that he's using? It's the same. This is really a two-parter tonight. This is part one. And next, next Friday, we'll have part two. Because... Um, this well is so deep, right? You wanted these vampires, right? This well is so deep. I, I thought, you know, you, you you assumed the baby brain eating thing was the worst. You know, we started with that. Okay, you ready? Let's go. What is it? What does it say? Oh, look, you know, there's um, there is this asp, you know, it's just super poisonous, right? Whatever it touches, it causes, you know, irremediable um burden pain plague yeah it's a you know um if anything touches it right just total corrosion baby right just kills it you know even the ground the ground where it's been in contact with these things doesn't grow the doesn't grow the grain yeah it doesn't there's no fruitfulness there you can even have these um from the water type and the area that they're around it'd be bereft of life baby it'll be bereft of life go oh, please blow it up it'll be bereft of life right and the trees trees where these things hang out you know they become sterile man you got no fruit got no fruit seriously wow that's a tough one yeah he says it's quite incredible it's mirandum est right incredible right but um even if a drop of this stuff touches it's really it's really dangerous stuff you know and it ca causes certain problems he goes into it but okay and there's no cure medellum look at the bottom he says we know there's no cure there's no cure for this thing yeah go for this class of drugs there's no absolutely no cure that's plenty's assertion yep is there a stormtrooper in my closet thank you are we ready get him go source <laughs> all right look the force of these things i just want you to see we're going to start talking about flames people flames wait a minute you mean um in this formula that we've got this medic formula from the midwa this communion you mean it's associated with flames yeah it is and petroleum products he talks about it but it's specifically associated with flames okay where does that come from logically people think about it for a minute where does that come from those vipers possess a flame in their venom if you don't believe me try it you'll be screaming all day long about being thirsty you'll find it you'll find the thirst we'll give it to you they do they induce it all the time right that's what do you think the prophets are doing excellent go to the last one mm, just go to the next one yeah we got a couple more we got no next one boom yeah oh god look at esanie esanie <sighs> look from this thing's mouth there's such a sunny there is such an awful awful poison flows out right it produces three plants produces three types of plants wait what now you're getting into an area that you know it's going beyond it's going beyond a little bit right 
um, what kind? Tell me, what kind of shrubbery do they have from this place, right? Right? Give me the next one. Um, there's food and drink involved, people. We're going to be putting this stuff in food and drink. Yeah, right. There's um, So of these plants, types of plants that come about in conjunction with the formula that is derived from that venom, what is happening? Well, one type of these things, you know, if you drink it, if, if you drink it, it gives you mente mutata. It gives you what? Look at that second line. Mente mutata. If you consume this stuff, it gives you mente mutata. That literally means a transformed mind. Vertitur in rabium. And it turns you into a rabid person. Rabid? Makes you rabid and changes your mind. Why would I want to do that? Okay, well, that's one of them. Do you hear? These are associations made with the drug, right? That they're using a venom to produce. And what happens to it? Um, the people, the next type, you know, if you, if you taste it, even if you taste it, it causes the taster to die. It's neckim. It's slaughter. Dude, you can slaughter someone with this stuff. Oh, you mean the aconite? Oh, <gasps> if you go back, if you go back, yeah, they're going to find this guy in the library uh, from Herculaneum, Nicander. If you go back to Nicander, you'll see which plants he's talking about. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? No, no, I'm not. Those plants derive their poisonous quality from the serpents that live around them okay okay when you hold up the serpent you're holding it up as an acknowledgement of where the true medicine is you want to live to 150 you want to live to 150 then you you go where the serpent is right everybody knows that Shh. marcus aurelius he started taking the theriac let's go go to the next one Boom. Boom. Yeah. Okay. Um, what was that third one? What was that third one doing there at the bottom? It's the juice of that one. If you drink that one or you use it as a Christing, an unction, that's a chemical Christing, right? That's what the term Christ means, right? So if you use that anointing, as you all like to say so sillily, if you use that anointing or you drink it, you know what happens to you? You get regio morbo. Oh, I don't want any of that. I don't want any of that. What is that, man? Kills your liver, bro. Makes you jaundiced. <laughs> you know, they have to take care of people who are in that mode. So what do they do? There's more drugs that will balance. Right, you have to fight what it is and the venom that causes that, right? That's killing the liver, and you have to counteract it with another compound. Isn't that cool? It's the whole idea of the theriac. The theriac, good. Any of the beasts, any of the beasts can bring you that cure. It's the one that pairs with the black death that is the mystery drug. Yeah, you got the Black Death and you got the Theriac. Do you know why she is so dangerous, Lady Babylon? Because she has the cup and it's the beast that brings her. <sighs> okay, did everybody get that? I know my congregation got that. Okay, stop it and go back and look at it for those of you who didn't because the rest of us want to get through this. Look at the. Look at that cup. Oh, that was gorgeous. I like that. It looks kind of steaming and everything. It's kind of steaming. It's almost like a tripod. You can sit on that and use it as a tripod, right? What do they use tripods for in antiquity? Oh, they collect things. And who sits on them? Well, the oracular priestess does. Eat my flesh and drink my blood. Yeah, let's go. Next, uh, my last one. I want to bring up my last one. Right? That was it. Whoop, go ahead. 
look, one more element that I want to show you for this um, is that they're combining on that second line. They're combining that thing that biblical translators translate as morsel. Remember when Judas is at the dinner with naked Jesus and the other 11 boys. And he's like, Hey, um, take this. He's like, watch. Right. Jesus is like, watch right to his close buddies. And there's a kid sitting on his lap too, probably John. Right. And he's like, look, watch this. And he gives him that morsel that he, he soaks in the, in the wine. Right. And he's like, oh, watch this. Um, they're doing this right here. And what do you do? What do you do when the you know what hits the fan? When the you know what hits the fan, you got to use this method of dipping that, right? Of taking that substance for the sake of what? For the sake of what? Ad refocilandum mentem. Oh, in a sense, what do you want? What are they trying to do for you? They're trying to do refokilandum to your mind. They're trying to remedy your mind, right? Again, we're, we're introducing toxins and we're following them with antidotes. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I think we get all these visions, right? Right. And then he goes on to talk about you got to be careful not to not to let, you know, back to the toads. You got to be careful not to let um, what you're making um, clawed up. Right. You got to keep it. And he says you put it back into the um, back into the copper. Right. Put the lid on all that kind of stuff. Um, so long, long, long uh, scientific, detailed um, process for making this stuff that starts with the toads. Why? Because we're going to use these biological substances. Um, you know, if somebody wants to fatten you up on drugs and put you through a process whereby you're able to squirt out in whatever way is necessary, some kind of life giving substance. Um, that is what humanity has pushed to obtain. That's what came to a head in antiquity. And what flourished was all of that attempt to use the environment to bring medicine. And apparently, it's about to get dark. I hope that you can join me for the second part. We will go deeper um, to the bottom of this little insert in the De Ortu Waluanii. We'll go even deeper um, and we'll look eye to eye to the serpents. We'll find that one and we'll bring the fire. Yeah, thank you for coming tonight. I hope that you enjoyed a brief look at those who are the vampires, those who eat the brains, those who eat the flesh and drink the blood, those who get caught in cemeteries at 4 a.m. with naked boys, right? Thank you very much for coming tonight. Hail Satan. Too late to be in the dark harbor with the love cup grape juice. Draining you blood suckers. Deep purple makeup. Cause I'm cuckoo for crazy pups, bitches. Hell satanico. Boogeyman Argonaut themes. Selling you some dreams. Lady Babylon, Cuba Libra. Hot stacks. Unloading the scorpion venom. And dragon snake latex. <laughs> Thank you.